Hey there, today we're going to be talking about how disruption can cause change. Disruption is a, you know, a protest, a disruption in the natural order of things that usually occur, you know? Like if you're walking down the road, usually you'd be walking down the road, but protests there causing disruption, making a statement for something blocks you from doing that, you kind of have to recognize that statement and it might click in your head, oh, what they're actually doing is disrupting me. So I notice what, you know, this group of people is doing wrong or what our government is doing wrong. And I that switch kind of flips and I begin to um, drive for change as well. Now, the thing about disruption is with disruption, you need attention, right? I mean, with everything, you need attention. If you want to make change in the political system or the natural system that the world works, you need attention. That's how America did it. That's how every country has done it since, well, since the beginning of time. I mean, think about it. If you have a little tiny group of people on the side of the road, you know, holding up their signs, you might get some people that honk or you know, get upset, but not everybody will even notice it. Actually, half the people will just be like, okay, and keep driving. But if you have a very large protest or a very big statement or a politician makes a big speech, you know, then that gets a lot of attention, therefore causing disruption, and then disruption causes change. It's kind of like a domino effect. You can't have the disruption without the attention. You can't have the change without the disruption. It just has to go. Even in the halls of Congress, they have disruption daily as they constantly argue each other. But they have to have the disruption to get that change, if you see what I mean. Okay, now we're gonna be talking about strikes in this next part. Strikes can also cause change because, well, you're taking yourself out of the system. You're taking yourself out of work, out of the economy. And if you're striving for, usually what we do is we strike for better pay or better working conditions. When these people realize how much this group or population of the world actually matters and their pockets start to get light and they are like, oh no, I'm losing money, then they're like, okay, I'll give you your working conditions, I'll give you your better pay, just come back to work. Strikes can cause this change because, again, it causes disruption, not so much in the political side, but more on the business side, like they did in factories back in the, or back in the 80s. You know, when factories were so dangerous and they just kept pushing people because they didn't care. Strike changed it. Now, there was also a bunch of disruption in the civil rights movement. Another great example of how disruption can cause change. The civil rights movement. Pe uh, black people got their rights. It took them a while, but they got them. You know how they got them? Constant disruption. They made their disruption. They got their attention. They caused the change. It's how they did it. I mean, Martin Luther King, he got a lot of attention. He got a lot of people following him, gaining more attention. Then they caused disruption or peaceful disruption, if you want to call it that, through their protests and whatnot. It still dragged more attention and more attention until eventually enough people were like, okay, this needs to change, and they changed it. Black people get their rights, 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment, boom, racism ends. Women's right movement. Now this one hasn't been as big as the civil rights movement, but it's still a good example of how disruption can cause change. Now a big one was the protests about abortion. There are many people that say, oh, you can't, you shouldn't be able to do that because the husband part. It's the husband's baby as well. And the women say, you know, my body, my choice. And it, you can't really fight them on that, unfortunately. Um, it is their body, their choice. So they get that attention from the protest that caused disruption. And they get it from online, social media, you know, they get it everywhere. And they do all this disruption. They cause all this attention. Then they get their change. Like, uh, I believe it was Roe v. Wade versus, I think it was Texas or something. I'm not 100% sure on the court case, but it was a big court case, Supreme Court case about abortion, and the Supreme Court ruled that Roe, or it was Roe v. Wade, sorry, 
that um, they could, that the women had the right to get an abortion and it wasn't really up to the men or the man. Now, this is a little bit of kind of a negative, you know? I mean, it's a negative and a positive. Okay, so political change, right? It can be good, but it can also be bad. Now, the disruption that we're talking about, protests, you know, um, politicians, strikes, all that kind of disruption that causes change brings attention to the, um, the problem at hand. It can cause worse things to occur, uh, otherwise known as a political collapse in this scenario. Now, these political collapses can, you know, consist of, you know, obviously Russia turning into the communist, the USSR, or maybe a, or Cuba going from capitalism to communism and their people starting to struggle. Now, this disruption doesn't always fight for the right thing, and sometimes these powers can get on top, making the country worse than it was before. Thankfully, it doesn't happen too often anymore, but it still does occur. Uh, I'm going to mention a specific person, otherwise, or a monk, called Kwang Duck. This guy lit himself on fire to protest the Vietnamese government. It's not always that the people are being mistreated. Sometimes the government is mistreating either themselves or another country or something else, and people need to make a statement. This monk was so dedicated to this statement, he lit himself on fire in the middle of the road. Caused disruption for a whole slew of people, got attention from all over the world, and he did cause change. The Vietnamese government got better. It said, okay, we're gonna start get working a little bit more for our people. It was a change, might have been small, might have been big, but it was a change caused by disruption and attention. I listed some videos on there about, you know, the bringing of the USSR, you know, women's rights protests, civil rights movement, the monk. I also had some sources that I was reading there in history, you know, common occurrences of political change or disruption causing the change with attention other stuff and then there you are you're at me presenting the presentation on the slide um that's my presentation i hope you enjoyed have a great day and uh, remember if you want to make change cause that disruption get that attention and you'll make that change see ya